Hi folks, Tim again, back here with timsclass.com. Uh, today we're gonna cover drill bits and go over just several of the different variations of bits and what they're used for. Uh, I wanted to start off by just talking about the electric drill for a minute. Uh, these have become a little bit antiquated, but if you've got to have power all day for a long time, you don't have multiple batteries, people still go to the electric drill. Uh, of course, it's called a corded drill, it's called several different things, but you got several key components. You got this handle, which of course is adjustable, and you can move that around wherever you want to use it and just tighten that down. You got a couple settings here on this particular drill. You've got the drill setting, and then if you swap, swap over to this side, it's a hammer drill. So that's used for drilling into concrete, and we're gonna illustrate that in a minute, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave that on regular drill. This is your chuck, and you'll notice as you turn this, what happens to the teeth as they come out? And that's what grabs your bit, okay? So if I wanted to put a bit in this, I'm gonna just set this in, Tighten it up by hand right here. And then I'm gonna use my chuck key, which you notice we keep it attached to the cord. I'm gonna use this chuck key and put it in the hole, all right? And it, it'll work with these gears right here that pins it against those gears. And then I twist it and that locks the bit in place, okay? If I wanna undo it, I just simply reverse the scenario. All right, get that on out of there. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, we're gonna use our battery operated drills, just much simpler, much easier. Don't have to worry about cords. And we'll start on this side. This is a simple twist bit, okay? It can be used for wood or metal. Uh, you can buy these pretty much anywhere and then just get whatever size you want. I mean, they make them all the way down into the 64 size wise, so you could get a 364 drill bit. Uh, these are very practical when it comes to steel, not used so much anymore when it comes to wood. All right, here we have a tapered bit. Again, this is a steel cutting bit. Uh, this is a tapered or what they call a step bit. If I didn't want to buy 20 of these, I could buy one of these and I've got about 15 different sizes I could cut with this bit, okay? So, and you can see it's in different steps and I don't know if you can see it on there or not, but it actually tells you what size at each step that it gets to. Okay, can't see it on the video. Okay, this is a countersink bit for steel. So let's say I've got a screw that I'm trying to put in the steel, but I want the head to stick down below the face of the steel. I would use this countersink to dig down in past my hole so that the head of the screw would go flush with the top of the metal. Okay, let's move over to this. We've got concrete drill bits. And you'll notice one of the big differences is the head is real flat and pretty much dull. Okay, you, you're not gonna maintain a sharp edge going into concrete. So these are meant to work with a hammer drill and they will drill into concrete, okay? Now I'm gonna illustrate, I've got a little one here. I've got concrete walls down in my basement. I don't wanna put a bunch of holes just for no reason, but I'm gonna put this small bit in here and let's walk over here to the concrete wall. Right now I've got it on regular drill mode and you're gonna see it does not wanna go in very easy, okay? If I swap this over to hammer drill, listen for the sound difference. See how much quicker and easier that will go through? Works much faster, much quicker. And what it's doing, it's pounding on that bit as it goes in. So that's a concrete drill bit. Now we're gonna move over to our primarily wood drill bits. Uh, this is a popular choice by electricians. This is an auger bit. This is a short one, but these are very aggressive in wood. If I'm running wiring through two befores and I need to get that hole cut quick, that's probably the bit that I'm gonna go to. All right, so we're gonna put that in there. What happens, you've got a screw here that actually just grabs it and sucks it down in. <laughs> fast that drill that hole. 
forgot to take it out of hammer grill. All right, so very quickly, it's a very aggressive bit, okay? Make short hole or short work of cutting a hole. All right, next, this is called a hole saw. And let's say I needed to drill a hole in a door for my doorknob. I would want to use a hole saw bit. And you can see on this bit, we've got a tip, which is just a regular, uh, what they call a twist bit. And it's stuck in the middle. This will get the hole started. And then this is going to cut the hole around all the way through. Now I'm not going to take the time to cut all the way through this. The smoke is just because the wood is kind of wet and you've got steel spinning on it. It's not going to hurt a thing. But if I took the time to drill that all the way through, we would end up with a hole all the way through. Well, I went ahead and did it anyway. As you can see, it drilled the hole straight through, okay? Your next big issue is getting your wood chunk out of there, which I've always found is best to just wait, let it cool, and then take a screwdriver and these slots and push it out. All right, your next bit, this is a spade bit. Very commonly used for drilling holes. This particular one's 5 8 inch. Works very similar to a hole saw but I'm not limited. I'm limited to my depth of cut here to about an inch and a half on this, and then I'm gonna bottom out. With this one, I could drill all the way to the length of the bit. Okay, and you can see it's very much the same as the auger, maybe a little smoother of a cut. The difference between this bit and the auger bit these get dull real quick. If I hit any type of metal, anything hard, this bit's gonna dull up real quickly. This one's very aggressive. It's not gonna dull so easy and I can run through a lot of stuff with it. All right, our next bit. This is a Forstner bit. Uh, spelled F-O-R-S-T-N-E-R. -E and it's a cross between these two bits right here. Okay, actually, I'm sorry, between this bit actually pretty much between all three of these bits. It has the same properties of the hole saw. It's aggressive like an auger saw, but it's not limited in depth. I can take it as, as long as my bit is, and I can get these in whatever length that I want. So these are a very aggressive, highly used bit. size of the shavings that it throws out. Quite a bit of difference. The other thing that these are used quite a bit for, electricians use these to set, maybe they'll have a pancake box that they want to put into a wall. Um, they don't want to go all the way through the wall. They just want to go deep enough for the box to go in. They'll use a Forstner bit and it will dig in just the right depth. All right, and the last bit that I want to cover is a simple countersink bit. If I'm doing some fancy woodwork and I want to be able to countersink my screws, I'm going to use this prior to driving the screw in. So all I'm doing is setting a place for my screw to go in down below the surface so that I can patch over it with either caulk or wood filler or something. So that's a countersink bit. This also keeps the wood from splitting. You've got some real hard wood that tends to split. Sometimes you'll want to make sure and use this countersink bit prior to putting your screw in to make sure you don't split the wood out. Okay, that sums it up for my lessons on drill bits. Hope you got something out of it. Go put something together.